Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the Ramadan edition. Insha'Allah, you've been fasting and you've been reaping the benefits and having a very, very spiritual Ramadan. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'af. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. How are you? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah. How's the fasting going? Taqabullah al-Siyam. How are you, Insha'Allah? Sheikh, now we've been discussing the different Ahkam from the Marja, the Sayyid, uh, the Grand Ayatollah, Sayyid Salik Shirazi. Um, what is his opinion on or his ruling on if someone has qada fast but he has no idea how many he has left for example مثلاً, if he has two or three or four or was not aware or has forgotten that oh I was traveling I traveled for this many days or was it this many days I'm not sure what does one do in that situation Inshallah. A'udhu billah as-sami'an alim min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin. Allah al-sallahu If an individual is not sure about the number of days that he missed um, and he has qada for the month of Ramadan, well, that person needs to go back and calculate the, the dates in which he are sure about them and certain. So let's say, when you ask him, he would say, yes, I'm sure, you know, 95%, let's say, that it was six days. But I'm not sure if it was seven days or, or, or more. But six days is something I'm, I'm sure about it. So they have to only t to take the certain days. So only the certain days that they are sure about, they do the qada, and they have to leave the rest which they have doubt on and, and unsure. So th this is the main uh, case for, for, for those who have missed and have qada of the month of Ramadan. Ahsan. And Shaykhna, when you have determined how many fasts you have to do, how many qada you have, do you have to do them straight away after Eid? The following day after Eid, you have to start paying back your qada fast? Well, for the qada, you are not obliged to uh, begin the qada straight away on the second day of Shawwal, which is second day of Eid. Because mm -hmm. on the first day of Eid, it's haram to fast. Yes. Qada or anything else. Um, but for the second of Shawwal onwards, uh, it's not wajib for you to begin the qada of those days and continuous of the days. So let's say you had six days you st start straight away after the uh, Eid. No, you have all the year from Shawwal, the Qa'da, all the way to Sha'ban the following year, up to the month of Ramadan of the following year. So you have to make sure that you did all the Qada before the start and the commencement of the month of Ramadan of next year. That's very important. So you go 11 months to do the Qada whenever you want. In the winter time, you know, the hours are shorter, for example. It's not that hot, for example. You do the qada and uh, not necessarily to be consecutive and continuous. Six days you can do once a week for six weeks, for example. Every Saturday, one day of qada and that's it. And inshallah Allah will accept uh, the fasting. Ahsan, Shaykhna. Shaykhna, do I have to do the qada so myself, the fast, do I have to repay it? And what if someone can't pay it back? Um, is he allowed to get somebody else to do it for him? Well, it is important to know that the wajibat, like the fasting, the prayers, as long as the individual is alive in this world and still living and breathing, they must do themselves the qada of salah, of psalm, and, and such like. However, with regard to the one who departs this world, the deceased one, so let's say someone's father dies and the father has few days of qada then it is the obligation of the older son the bigger son who, who is the wali he becomes the wali now the wali who is in the in charge of the uh, the issues with regard to his father for example 
he has to uh, fast the qada of his father. And of course, there's a condition with this regard that if he wants to do the qada of his father of the month of Ramadan, um, it has to be with an excuse. So the father, let's say he was in travel and he lost his life. Let's say he died in, in travel okay. in the month of Ramadan. Or let's say he was ill, he couldn't fast that month. Then the oldest son must do the uh, qada for these days in which the father had an excuse. But if the father was, God forbid, a non-religious, let's say, he never fasted, he never prayed. In this case, no, there's no obligatory on the older son, the wali, to, uh, uh, to do the qada of the fast. It's only when uh, the father has an excuse, illness or, or trouble, and he missed the month of Ramadan fasting. Can you actually pay these people as well to keep the fast on behalf of uh, the deceased? Well, if the wali, who is the older son in this scenario, um, didn't want to do the qada himself, um, then he is, if he's got the means, you know, the, the right money, um, to give it to somebody, to hire somebody, and pays him to do the qada of the month of Ramadan of his deceased father. So that's fine. Find somebody. And there are people around who would, you know, uh, charge an amount of money to do the qada of the month of Ramadan or the qada of the prayers for the whole year, for example. And that is allowed and valid, yes. And the, uh, the, the qada will be, inshallah, accepted as well. Ahsant, ahsant. Shaykh, I have some other questions in regards to fasting. Um, a bit miscellaneous. Can a Muslim who is fasting, can he offer food and drink to another Muslim um, if that person is deliberately not fasting? Well, according to the Sayyid's mas'ala in this regard, he says it, it's not allowed and permitted for the mu'min who is fasting to offer and serve food or drink to a Muslim or even to the non-Muslim because oh. the ahkam is also obliged on even the non-Muslims. They have to also uh, you know, join the belief and, and fast and, and pray and so forth. So in this case, uh, we're not allowed to offer and, and serve the food, uh, particularly to the Muslims who are, you know, as I've said, non-religious, for example, they don't fast, they don't, they don't pray in the month of Ramadan, in the daytime, of course, not in the night time. And of course, the Sayyid says also the non-Muslims okay. because the ahkam is also bound to them. Not only the Muslims. Ascent. And Sheikh, what if uh, I'm not fasting? I have a legitimate reason. I'm ill, I'm traveling, this and that. Am I allowed to eat uh, and drink food, especially in front of other Muslims? Well, the Sayyid says it is makruh and disliked by the Sharia ah, that you eat in front of somebody else. Let's say you're ill and your parents are well, they have no issue or your sisters or brothers, and you start eating in front of them in, in the month of Ramadan. This is something is disliked and makruh by the Sharia. Ah. So you try to find an isolated place in your own bedroom, for example, you close the room, or some, somewhere away from the view of the people, and you begin eating and drinking because you're ill or traveling or, or anything else, any other excuses. Um, otherwise, uh, it's better to avoid it. Ahsan Sheikhna. Sheikhna, what about uh, students and especially uh, people who do hard labor? Um, if fasting is too difficult for them, are, are they allowed to break their fast? Well, such excuses um, for those who are studying, let's say, mm. or working hard, as long as they don't suffer extreme thirst or extreme hunger. You know, it's just that we get tired, you get thirsty. You know, this is how the month of Ramadan, the wisdom of, of, of this month is that you get thirst. You have to get the feeling of, the, of, 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 of thirst and hunger. And we have hadith for that, that the Imam alayhi salam says that is to feel that feeling with those who are in poverty, who don't have the bread in, in their dinner time, for example, to eat, and they sleep hungry, for example, is all... The idea of the fasting is to make us to feel the hunger and the mm -hmm. thirst. 
So there's no excuse, no, if you have exams, if you're re revising for the exams, you got coursework to do, for example, um, you still have to fast. And if the one who's working, let's say, uh, in, in, in construction or teaching or anything else uh, with regard to working practice, uh, they must fast, they must continue uh, their fast from the Fajr till Maghrib Adhan, um, unless, as I've said, it goes extreme and they really needed to uh, break their fast due to difficulty in continuation of the fasting. Otherwise, um, if they feel well, then they're not allowed to break their fast. Shashma, what if a student turns around and says, well, I'm fasting, I can't concentrate in my lessons, I've got uh, exams coming, I've got a big project to finish, um, I need food and drink to keep my mind working. Is this a valid excuse not to fast? Well, again, um, there's no excuse for them to break their fast. Um, however, there is a, a solution for that. They can actually travel on that day, let's say they have it on the exam day, they can travel outside their hometown by traveling 45 kilometers in and out. So they go outside the, uh, their own city or village, they travel. When they reach that destination, they can break their fast in the morning, they break their fast, and then they come back home. And خلاص, they become a hukum of musafir as a traveler and they can drink and eat, that's fine. Okay. In this situation, they can overcome the situation. So, traveling on that day, break your fast in travel, and then come back, and then do their exam or whatever they had to do. And they have to, of course, afterwards, after the month of Ramadan, to do the qada of that particular day that they, they broke the fast, due to an excuse, which is the safar and traveling. Awesome. Awesome. Sheikh, now, what if um, I was keeping a fast, and suddenly I felt very, very thirsty, extremely thirsty. I, I drank a cup of water and I continued my fast. Is my fast still valid? Uh, and if not, do I have to do a qada or pay a kafara for that? Again, if it was extreme thirst, extreme hunger, you know, almost losing, uh, you know, fainting, for example, yeah. all these conditions allow you to break the fast, that's fine. Drink that water. But make sure that you do the qada afterwards and there's no kafara. Okay. But if it was deliberate and um, it's just because of feeling a bit tired or a bit of thirst, then that will make the fast uh, void and batil and with kafara as well because you broke it deliberately. Mm -hmm. And that's not an excuse that oh, I'm feeling thirsty, I'm feeling tired, I need to drink, to eat. That will make the one to pay kafara as well. Okay. But in the ex extreme situations, no, it's just the qada. Awesome. And Sheikhna, um, in regards to something going down your throat, I remember we discussed about dust, thick dust going, uh, and, and smoke and steam. Sheikhna, what about when I put on perfume? You said it was mustahab to wear perfume during Ramadan for the, someone who was fasting to uh, wear perfume. So I, you know, I spray a bit here, here. Sometimes you know, the smell goes down your throat. Sometimes you can taste the smell. Does this invalidate the fast? Well, you have to make sure and be careful when you use uh, the perfume that the, when you spray the perfume, make sure that nothing of those sprays and, and the liquids reaches your throat. Okay. So you spray it on your clothes, let's say, for example. Even if you feel um, uh, the taste, let's say, in your throat, but it wasn't actually the drops or okay, the sprays. The, the, it's, 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 the, it's just the, 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 smell, the scent, the exactly. Scent, yeah, just the, the scent, scent in your nose, your tongue, in your yes. throat. That's fine, as long as there's no particles of that spray of liquid went inside your throat. So that's fine. I mean, even if you smell the creams or using shampoo, let's say, yeah. that's fine. The smell is a smell. It well, doesn't break the fast. What about if you're going, let's say, in Ramadan, I don't know why this happens, but... You can smell everything. You can smell all the food, especially when you walk past a restaurant or a bakery, um, and you can smell that fresh bread, and and that that smell, uh, and, and and sometimes your mouth starts to water as well. Does this invalidate the fast? Not at all. These are not part of the uh, invalidators of fast, as I've mentioned. We have ten main ones, and um, the smellings would would not break uh, the fast be it food, be it anything else. And I've mentioned the makruhat, some of the plants, it's makruh to smell them, 
-hmm. but it won't break your fast. But it's makro to smell them. Okay. Some of the plants, you know, it's got nice scent. Uh, but otherwise, uh, whatever you smell, uh, good or bad, w will not break your fast. Sheikh, you were talking about immersing one's head in water invalidates the fast. Um, what about when we have a shower um, and, and there's water on our head all the time and, and then we're showering or we get shampoo, we put shampoo all over our head. Does this invalidate the fast? Well, there's a difference between immersing and taking a shower. Immerse is to put your head, entire head, inside a bucket of water, inside a pool, inside a pond, the seawater. To go the whole thing inside um, so you're talking about immersion. massive water. You're talking about immersion. immersion, exactly. Full immersion exactly. is not allowed. Taking a shower, that's not immersion. That, that's different. Mm. That's a different subject. That's, that's more like applying water to you. You apply water on your head, that's fine. And let it be what, you know, all together straight away, that's fine. The immersion is the one in which invalidates the, uh, the fast. Ahsan Sheikh, now my final question. Is it better for us to do the wudu? and go pray the Salah? Or should we open our fast? Well, in this case, it is mustahab for the one to pray first. It's better to pray first, of course, to begin with the Salah, and then you go and eat. However, if, if you are in a situation that you won't be able to pay attention to the Salah, in the Salah you say, Allah, and you think about the food. And when am I going to finish my Salah? And you try to finish it quickly to go and eat. In this case and in the other case is where you have somebody waiting for you. Let's say your parents, your family, a guest waiting for you on the dinner table. So you, for, for these two cases, no, it's better to uh, eat first and then you pray afterwards. But the general rule is that to pray first is the best option. Thank you very much, Sheikh. And thank you to all our viewers for joining us on today's episode. Inshallah, you've benefited and inshallah, you'll be able to focus properly in your prayer. Inshallah. Until next episode, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.